Hello, welcome to Youth Open Shop Live. My name is Ryan, I'm here with JP, and we're here to answer your questions and help you learn more about bikes. So today we're gonna be going over more about bearings. And this is a continuation off last week's stream. We do these every week, 5 p.m. Tuesdays, uh, here on the U Bicycle Collective YouTube channel and on Zoom. So if you wanna join us, go to tiny.cc slash yos live to be able to post your questions in the Zoom webinar Q&A section. Those are, we're all, we're answering those right as we get them. Now you can also go to the links below in the YouTube channel website because uh, YouTube channel, the YouTube video page, go to those links that are below because if you don't, if you can't watch us live, if you're watching on the video on demand, uh, you can always submit a question by going to the Google form that's linked down below. So that's what we do here. We answer your questions. Whatever bike related question you have, go ahead and ask it. And we will try to do our best to cover it and help answer your question. Whether it's simple, whether it's something we've covered before, whether it's difficult, whatever, we'll do it here. Now, before we get started with the adjusting the bearings, we're gonna go over a couple rules. We have the safety rules here. First, we have internet safety. So if you want to join us and participate, you have to follow these guidelines and these are also linked below in the YouTube description for a longer description. And then we also have work safety. If you're working on your bike at home, always make sure that you're safe. And these are the safety rules, these are the basics. And again, those are listed more on our website. If you go to the yos, uh, tiny.cc slash yos dash l rules, yeah, you'll be able to go there and see all the descriptions of the rules and links and whatnot. So yeah, we're working on lots of stuff here. Uh, we're working on a really cool video coming up here real soon. We'll announce that in a bit. But uh, for now, we're gonna be doing continuation. So now, last week, let me make sure there's audio. Oh, good, okay. Sorry, I have my phone here with the YouTube video up. Make sure there's audio. So last week we went over bearings. Now bearings are the little metal balls that are inside and make part, whatever spins on a bike helps them spin. So there are bearings inside the wheels, inside the bottom bracket where you pedal. This is, this is called the bottom bracket and it's where the crank connects to the pedals, connects to the frame. So that's how, that's where your feet go to make the bike go forward, in case you didn't know. So. That's what we got going here. Now we've also got bearings inside this tube right here. This is called the head tube of the frame. And inside that is the, the fork and the handlebars. And that connects to the frame so that way you can steer it and holds the front wheel in place so you don't go over the, so you don't lose your front wheel. This is very important. Now, the, now there's a couple of different uh, components of a bearing. Now each one has a couple different parts. Let's see, we got the graphic up there. Got a graphic that I made. All right, so yeah, here we go. We've got on each, on everything, there's what you can call the axle or the spindle, or in this case, I guess it would be called the, the fork. And this, would, this is what the bearings, uh, this is what rotates. And inside each part, there's a part that's called the cup that holds the bearings. Let's see, I've got a little bearing here. A cup, the bearing goes into, you see that? Yeah, the bearing goes into, and then on top of that, you have the cone. Now, sometimes the bearings that we're gonna be adjusting today have the cones on the outside, on the, as nuts that tighten down into the, into the cup, but this will be, but for example, the bottom bracket, the cone is actually in this, this is called the spindle. Kind of like when you're spinning, uh, what is it? And that's an old, Dis like one of the first Disney movies, Sleeping Beauty. She pricks her finger on a spindle of a, of a spinning wheel. And that's how she falls asleep. Well, this, is, this won't put you to sleep unless it's really boring. So let's try to fix that. So anyway, the cone is this part here. It holds the bearings in place inside the cup. And that's the way it is with all the parts. Now there are, this setup is 
in the headset where the fork connects to the handlebars, in the wheel, in the wheel hub that where the spokes connect to the wheel itself, and then in the bottom bracket where the crank connects to the frame. So we're gonna, today we're gonna go over why you'd need to adjust those. Now, every once in a while, these will get loose. The, the, uh, the cone will come loose of the cup and, oh no, I forgot the other graphic where there's the demonstration of play. Oh. I will post that. Follow us on, check us out on, uh, on Instagram, Ogden Bicycle Collective, and I'll post a picture there to kind of illustrate what it means like between when there's play so what, what happens is when the bearings are loose, that's called play. I don't know if you can see that. Mm, this one's not too much. Uh, JP, can we focus on the pedals here real quick? Yep. Thank you. Oh yeah, it's real tight. But as you can see, the pedals are just kind of wiggling there. Let me go around this way. They just wiggle there. That's because this, the cone is loose. And so we need to tighten the cone but we're gonna do it up here on the headset because it's rather easier to see. And I can take that apart so that way it's easier to see. All right, first step, let's say you have your bike and the front handlebars, they're just loose and they're shaking around. Like it feels like your bike is coming apart. This is, this is how you'd fix that. So first up, what I'm gonna do is I've already loosened it, but I'm gonna loosen the bolt in the top of the stem. The stem is what holds the handlebars. I'm gonna loosen the bolt in the stem and I'm just gonna let that dangle there for a bit. The cables will hold it on. But I'm gonna show you this. This part here, let me turn it sideways a touch. This part here is what's called the lock nut. And it locks down the cone. So that way the cone, JP, could you pull up that graphic again of the parts? Sorry, I'm making JP jump all over. He's a, he's a video juggler today. He's doing a great job. So, the, this is the lock nut, which is yellow in this uh, diagram here. Am I in front of it? Oh, I'm behind it. Okay. You know, yellow, uh, this is the lock nut, which is yellow in the diagram, and it holds the cone down so that way the cone doesn't accidentally slip upwards. So, what we're going to do is I've got the lock nut, taken it off. On top of that is the lock washer. Now, it looks like I'm pulling it from behind the graphics ear, but you can see it there. It's a, uh, but on this washer, there's a small notch. I don't know if you can see it. It's gotta be like one pixel wide on the camera, but on it, inside of it, it's not completely round. There's a small notch and that goes on to a slot on the, on the stem, I mean, on the fork. And that makes it so that way the, the cone doesn't accidentally unscrew, but what happens now is so I'm just going to take it off and show you. This is the cone of a headset. This whole assembly, the, everything that holds the, hand, the fork to the frame, all the screws and the bolts and the nuts and the bearings, that's called the headset. It's kind of like headphones, but for your bike. Oh, you can kind of think of that. It's got the two sides on only your if your head was sideways and very tubular. So we've got the cone here and I'm gonna pull it off and then hold it up close to the camera so you can see it. Maybe I can bring it in even closer. I still in focus there. There we go. Okay, so if you notice, there's a little slope that curves inward and on that is a smooth bit. Now that smooth bit is called the race. Now the race is like, you can think of it as a racetrack. It's where the ball, it's where the bearings, the metal bearings roll around all the way around it. So it's smooth and it's uh, hard and metal. And if this is ever chipped, like if you see big gap dents in it, that's when you get a need to get a new one. Now there's two of these on the handlebars. We'll zoom back out here. There's one at the top, then there's one at the bottom. And here I've got two examples of forks. Now these, you'll notice this one is square, but this one has what's called a crown race. Cause it's like a crown if your head is super tall and cylindrical. But 
This is what's called the crown race because it's the cone that goes in the bottom of the frame and holds bearings inside of this. Now, if this ever gets loose, sometimes those bearings will just fall out and spill everywhere. Make sure you at least find some of them because you wanna know what size of bearings you need to replace. You wanna use the same size of bearings as was in it before. So that way you don't damage your fork or your frame or your bicycle in general. And I'm gonna stop dinging those together. Well, okay, promises were made, promises were broken. Point is, there's a two, so this is it before it has the crown race on and then you get one and you press it down on there. All right, I'm gonna put these back down. Thanks JP. Yeah, no problem. All right, so now, now inside here, oh, let me show you. This one's, a, these, this bottom bracket, I'm gonna just gonna pop these out with a screwdriver. This one's actually in a retainer. And this, oh man, it needs grease. Now you generally don't need to do this, but if you ever do take this apart, you might as well check if there's grease on these because these ones are as dry as a bone. And if you remember from last week, grease helps it so there isn't friction, so you don't wear down the bearings but it also prevents rust and from the part, the bearings rusting to the, to the races and from the retainer from breaking down. If you remember last week, on last week's video, we had a wheel where the retainer had broken down, the bearings had escaped and it had actually worn away the metal of the wheel itself. So it was just completely destroyed because, because exactly this, the cone was too loose. And because that cone was so loose, it, the, it let the bearings escape, go all over the place and just cause havoc. Like it destroyed the wheel. It destroyed the hub part of the wheel. So here's what we're gonna do to fix that. So let's say you have shaky handlebars, shaky pedals or a loose wheel that's wiggling back and side to side and is loose on its axle. What you do is first you tighten the cone this one's grippy on the side so you can tighten it with your hands. Sometimes they require a special tool like this wrench or sometimes they require a really funny bumpy tool if it's a really old bike. And sometimes they don't even have cones like this. Sometimes it's a, if we go back to the headset episode, man, that was like a month ago. If you go back to that video, we go over the two different types of headsets so where the handlebar, no, excuse me, the two different types of stems um, how handlebars are held to the frame and to the fork of the bike. And there's two different kinds, threaded, like this one, and threadless. And so this is how you fix a, fix a threaded one, which generally more common on older bikes. But uh, if you have a, threaded, a threadless headset, then what you do is you just tighten that top screw. You'd loosen the side screws, tighten the top screw until it doesn't wiggle anymore and then tighten the side screws again. Now for this one, when you tighten it, you don't wanna tighten it too much. You wanna tighten it so it doesn't wiggle, but if you crank it down and tighten it really hard, then the fork won't turn and that could actually cause damage too. So you wanna have it just tight enough. You don't want it too tight. You don't want it too loose. You want it just tight enough so that the bearings can roll around inside the race. And Again, the race is that part of the cup or the cone where the bearings race around. That's how I remember it. I just learned that today. So I shouldn't have trouble remembering it. So yeah, uh, yeah. if you guys have any questions about what I like any of the topics, just go ahead and ask them and we'll go over them in a future video. Uh, for example, I'd already, I'd always known the words, but I hadn't really, I, until I sat down to write how to teach how to explain this to other people, I had to ask other people. So if you guys ever have questions, that's the whole point of this. Go ahead and ask, and we'll do our best to help answer them. All right, anyway, so we've tightened the cone. This one you tighten with your fingers, not too bad. And you don't tighten it down like a ton, but just enough. Sometimes the cone will get rusted. Oh no, we'll take the graphic down. Thanks, JP. Uh, okay. Uh, so anyway, we sometimes the cone will get rusted and stuck on the threads and that can be a big old pain. So ask for help. Sometimes you might need to use a big pair of pliers like this, but you have to be super careful not to just destroy it. 
because then you have to get a new fork and that's not fun. Anyway, so we've tightened the cone. Now we have to lock the cone down in place. Here it is, I lost it. So we're gonna take the, this is a threaded headset. So it has a lock washer with a little notch in it. You line up the notch with the, with the little uh, slot in the back there. And then we're gonna take the lock nut. Now this lock nut, the, the lock nuts for uh, headsets are sometimes very long on top. You wanna make sure you get one that's long enough. So that way it doesn't, because if it's too short, then it won't tighten enough. Found that out the hard way the other day, but that's okay. But anyway, what we need to do is we need to tighten this as much as we can to the cone. So we need to take the lock nut and we tighten it to the cone. We don't tighten it from either side because then the handlebars won't turn. So we make sure that the cone is in the tight enough spot so it doesn't get loose again. And then we get the wrench and that's kind of what the lock, wash, the lock washer does too is it keeps the cone from tightening more than it should. Oh, okay, and here's a question. This is a question I've heard a bunch, but uh, what do you do if you can't get the washer off? Sometimes you'll go and you'll take it apart and the washer is just stuck in there. There's a couple of things you can do. Uh, a lot of the times it's because that little notch in the lock washer has jammed itself in between the threads. So you can find where the notch is. You look at the top, you find where the notch is and you can take a pair of pliers, grab the washer, and then try to, try to nudge it to line up with the slot in the threads again. So that way it just slides off. Otherwise, you can try to pry it up with a screwdriver, but that's super dangerous, um, especially if you're holding like this, and then you send the screwdriver through your hand. You have to be very careful when you're trying to pry things up. Uh, I recommend the plier method. It's, I've had more success with that. But, you know, uh, oh, and sometimes if, you, if the washer is stuck and you can't move it, tighten the cone as much as you can because that'll pull it away from the washer so that way you can wiggle the washer free. But most of you probably won't deal with that, um, even though I have seen it a lot on especially old bikes. If they've been ridden for a very long time, that washer will just kind of slip and get jammed up in different places. So at any rate, I tightened this, the lock washer. Oh, and part of the rules, always use the right tool for the job. Make sure you have a wrench that's big enough. Now you can use, say like a pair of locking pliers like this, but you run the risk of slipping. And every time you slip, you, you shave off just the tiniest bit of metal. And after a while, pretty soon you won't have, it won't be six sided like a normal nut, it'll be completely round and then it'll be a lot harder to take off. So try to make sure you're using the best tool you can. So uh, they do make wrenches like this one. Oop. Kick a chair. They do make wrenches like this one that are big enough. This one's actually too big, so I can't use it, but they do make wrenches that are big enough but you can also use one of these is just make sure that you tighten it down as much as you can. So yeah. All right. So that's how you tighten the headset. Now, let's see, how are we doing on time? Now we uh, try to keep this short. We, won't pro we probably won't go into how to do the bottom bracket, but the, if you have a one piece bottom bracket, then the, there's, lot, there's at least three different kinds of common bottom bracket. There's so many different kinds of bottom bracket, but uh, we'll probably do an episode on the three different kinds and how to fix those. Uh, it might not be for a while, but we will probably do that at some point. But if you have a one piece bottom bracket like this bike does, then what you do is you just tighten the cone uh, and, then make, and then tighten the lock nut to the cone. So that way the cone doesn't slowly unthread its way out and slip out. So yeah, let me go ahead. I'm just gonna put this back together again. It's got the quill stem. Now this is the quill stem and in order to tighten it, to lock it in place, we're just gonna 
Oops. Tighten the bolt on the top. There we go. All right. So that's how you tighten the headset of the of the fork and the handlebars. Make sure that the, they aren't slipping or shaking back and forth and shaking itself loose and damn it and making sure you don't damage your bike. So there's lots of different things about bearings, but this is one of the most common things that I've seen. So if you have this problem on your bike, go ahead and put uh, put this to use. If you need help, always ask. We'd love to go over this again if you need help with it. So for now, uh, that's, it. that's it for the work portion today. And before we go, we'd just like to invite you guys to subscribe to the YouTube channel to join us, to join us if you can for the next Zoom webinar. And also share this with your friends and family. Let them know that if they need help fixing their bike, that we're here to help them. Uh, normally, youth open shop is a time where uh, youth can come in and we'd help them fix their bikes and they'd help us fix bikes for donation. But we want to help you guys continue to learn about bikes until we can open up again. And we want to help you no matter where you are, whether you can come in or not. So go ahead, share this with everyone you can so that way we can spread the word. We can get a, a good community going so that way we can help as many people fix their bikes and learn more about them because Fixing bikes is fun and we want to share that. So go ahead and join us if you can and watch the videos on our YouTube channel. All right, now after we do the work portion, we always do, we always do a Q&A, just an off topic Q&A. And I don't think I got any questions from the Google form from last week or from the week before. I think we're caught up on those questions now. But if you have any questions, you can go ahead and answer them, ask them there. Uh, any off topic questions on the Zoom right now? Nope. nope, not right now. So you can always ask any question before or after the stream and we'll go ahead and answer them here. So yeah, uh, JP, any questions that you think people would have about bearings? Um, should you use grease or WD-40? Oh, this was a callback. Should you use grease or WD-40? That's a good one. Now, if you've like WD-40 and duct tape, those are like in everyone's garage, right? But WD-40 does a really good job of getting water, getting underneath water and pulling it out. So if you have a part that's rusted or a really greasy chain you need cleaning, you can use a bit of WD-40, but WD-40 evaporates off really quickly. And grease sticks around for ages. Uh, so, uh, usually grease gets dirty and that's when you need to clean it off and apply new grease. But grease will stay around for ages and it won't let water in. So WD-40 is good for getting water out, but grease doesn't let water get in in the first place. Well, it helps get, make sure water doesn't get in in the first place. So yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. All right, so now we are going to, oops, that cable's all funky. Now we're gonna go ahead and end the stream for the day. You guys go ahead, uh, go out there, ride your bikes, be safe and have a great day.